Hello everyone, my name is Matt Anderson. I'm a chemical PE licensed in California, and this is a very brief video on how to become a professional engineer, because I've had a lot of feedback from people who want to know, you know, what steps does it take, how do you actually do that, and I just wanted to lay it out in a quick video showing um, the basic requirements and how to do a little more research on your own. So I say that this, this is the most common path for PE licensure because there's other options which include not getting a four-year degree where you can substitute in work experience. But this, uh, how I'm explaining it is assuming that you have a four-year college degree or you're working on a four-year degree in uh, chemical engineering. So I, I, I call them requirements. I didn't say steps because some of them you can do out of order. Uh, this is kind of a typical order and is you know how I did it, but you can do it a little bit differently. Anyways, uh, so requirement one for getting your PE license is to graduate from an EAC ABET accredited university with a chemical engineering BS degree. You can search the ABET website, which is just abet.org, for accreditation information to make sure that the program you graduated from or you're at is ABET accredited. Uh, second requirement is to pass the Fundamentals of Engineering exam, commonly called the FE, and you register for this test through NCEES, which is the organization, it's a national organization that runs testing for uh, the FE and the PE exams. Uh, so an important note is that this test can be taken prior to graduation. I took it after I graduated, but you can definitely take it prior to you finish, prior to finishing your, your degree. Requirement three is to obtain your engineer and training licensure. And so that requires passing the FE exam. After you pass the FE exam, you have to submit an application to your state licensing board. So each state has a different board uh, that uh, licenses professional engineers. Uh, requirement four is to obtain work experience. And so the amount of work experience depends on your state. Uh, just as an example, California requires two years while Texas requires four years. Then requirement five would be to pass the principles and practice of engineering exam. Up until I took the test, I thought a PE exam just stood for professional engineer exam, but it's actually principles and practice of engineering. And you register for this test through NCEES, which is where you already registered for the FE exam. So after you finish all that, you need to prepare and submit your PE application to the state licensing board. And I underline that again because you're really dealing with two different organizations when you're uh, pursuing your PE. The tests and examinations are done through NCEES, and that's for everyone, it's a national organization, while your applications for EIT and PE go to your state licensing board. And so just as an additional note, that uh, application does require letters of recommendation, and I believe the language is, um, it has to be from people who are technically competent to uh, provide feedback on your work as an engineer. So this is just three organizations that I think are helpful to know a little bit about as you're going through the application process. The first one is NCEES, which is the National Council of Examiners for Engineering and Surveying. So they run the examinations. You'll register uh, for the FE and P exams through NCEES. So you go to that website, you make a profile, and you find all out about exams through that website. What's cool about chemical is that um, it's one of the only disciplines that all of the examinations are computer-based trainings. So you can register to sit basically any day of the year for the exam, as long as that testing center has availability. I had to sign up several months in advance for my PE exam and FE exam, so that's something to keep in mind. They're very long exams. Uh, FE is uh, about five and a half hours, PE is in excess of eight hours. So uh, for example, your PE exam, you basically need a seat for the whole day. So that makes it tough to schedule sometimes. Um, second organization here is uh, the state organization, the state board. So I just put the State Board of California on here as an example. The Board for Professional Engineers, Land Surveyors, and Geologists. Uh, each state will have a different board, and this is where you'll actually submit your applications for uh, FE and PE. And this is also where you would go to find out about the requirements, for example, for uh, work experience for your state. So you can go to the NCEES website and then just click on your state. There's a map on the first page where you click on the state that you live in to, to find out what organization kind of governs your licensure application. Then the last website, if you might be interested in, is abet.org. And abet is the accreditation board for engineering technology. And that's just where you can go to verify uh, if your school is abet accredited. All right, if you have any questions, please uh, leave a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks.